Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to talk to you about something that is very close to my heart and that is anxiety. I massively suffer from anxiety myself. I feel like it's a huge talking point these days. Lots of people saying, do you know what? I suffer from it too and it's really becoming much more common and accepted and much more discussed and people are becoming just much more aware of it and comfortable talking about it which I think is amazing however I feel like what I see a lot mainly on YouTube is what I'm talking about is people saying do you know what I suffer from anxiety that's an issue that I have and I think that's amazing I think that's fantastic that it's becoming something that people were just saying do you know what hey lots of people suffer with it you're not alone it's not abnormal it's very common lots of people that you look up to and love and know and would never think have these kinds of challenges like us everyday folk actually have all the same struggles and lots of the same issues as we do and i think that's amazing but what i feel like i haven't seen as much or hardly any of at all is people actually talking about how they manage it what it looks like for them how it manifests how they make it better what makes it worse what helps all that kind of stuff that actually is the real useful stuff like i think it's amazing to put your hands up and say do you know what i really suffer from anxiety and i think that's very inspiring and i think that's really empowering to all those people out there who feel alone or feel like a freak or feel like they are you know in some way not normal i think that's amazing but i feel like the next step is to actually talk about what why how and everything that goes along with anxiety not just saying i've got it but actually saying this is what it looks like this is how i manage it this is what helps this is how i cope with it this is how i survive it and actually inspiring and giving people advice and tips and all of that stuff and a bit more information i guess that's kind of what i want to try and do with you guys today i feel like myself i manage it fairly well most of the time i feel like i've definitely learned some really great ways to help and i feel like i have a very good knowledge of what doesn't help what makes it worse what exacerbates it so i feel like i have some tips and tricks to offer you and that's what i'm going to try and do today so the first thing i would recommend and this is what i decided to do when i kind of fully realized and accepted that anxiety was the word that kind of summarized what i was feeling and what was happening so the way that i actually realized that and kind of i guess self-diagnosed although my doctor had sort of um suggested that i was suffering from stress and anxiety before but i'd never i don't know if i'd fully been diagnosed with anxiety um so what happened is i actually went on a course with my work and uh the course was mental health uh counseling type of training uh, course that I did and um, we were given you know coursework and workbooks and lots of case studies and things like that and everything I was reading was like really resonating with me and really making sense of everything I'd always kind of known that I really suffer from stress and, and I do you know really get overwhelmed in stressful situations and I you know obviously I'd had some very stressful events in my life in the last few years that had really caused sort of lasting like effects or trauma i guess and i think the strangest part of like my anxiety and it's not just kind of limited to one little box but the strangest bit of it is the social anxiety so that's kind of the main issue that i have that causes me a problem the most in my everyday life and that is the bit that really was an eye-opener for me reading these textbooks and going on this course because i'd never heard of social anxiety before all of the feelings and issues and challenges and thoughts that i have around social situations I've just always thought nobody likes me, people hate me, people are talking about me, people are looking at me, um, you know, I'll go to an event or like a party that is literally just my best friends and I'll leave thinking everyone hates me and oh my god I embarrass myself and no one wanted me there and no one was talking to me and I'll like talk to my husband about these feelings and he'll literally be like where's this come from you know and we'll rationalize and over the next few days i'll rationalize myself and i'll think why did i feel that way like you know i spoke to everybody we all had conversations i've been messaging everybody since i don't know you know why and 
you know, I find it very hard to go into social occasions. I find it very hard to walk in. Whenever we're going into like a pub or a restaurant, even if it's one I'm really familiar with, my husband always has to walk in in front of me. I can't walk in first, I hate that. Um, there's lots of little things before that I've just thought either everybody feels this way or I've thought that I'm bonkers or I don't know why why I feel that way. I've just never really sort of thought about it before, but I literally was sat there reading this textbook and seeing every one of these examples in this box that said social anxiety and I was like, oh my goodness. So that's, that's why I feel that way. And it's really helped me understand it and also actually helped me control and mo not control necessarily, but monitor it and rationalize it. So now I know when I come away from a party or an event or a dinner with my friends and I'm feeling all of these feelings, I can say to myself, that's your social anxiety speaking. It didn't actually happen. <laughs> it's just your anxiety speaking. So that's really been helpful. So I would massively recommend getting a book about anxiety. If it's social anxiety specifically that affects you, then specifically about that kind of niche of anxiety, but otherwise just a general book about anxiety because it will really help you understand what it is why it's happening, why you feel and think in the way that you are. And it will also probably give you an idea of what help you need and what help is out there and what help will specifically apply to you and what you want to do. So my main thing that I found hugely helpful was getting a notepad and writing all of these things down. So I wrote down all of the ways that I feel, all of the things that I've noticed make it worse, all of the things I've noticed makes it better, all of the things that I want other people to do in these scenarios, all of my symptoms and all of my behaviours relating to all of that. And one, this really helped me actually reflect and understand myself better. And I then shared all of that with my husband. He is actually very, very good and very, very understanding. Um, and he knows me probably better than I know myself and what's going on and why I'm being the way I'm being. But I think actually communicating it and then saying to him, this is what makes it worse. So he knows not to do those things. And he also knows that if he does do those things and he gets a reaction, that's why. And it helps him kind of understand why, you know, I've imploded as opposed to him thinking he's trying to make it better, if that makes sense. Um, it also makes him understand, you know, why I've with, withdrawn, why I've behaved in certain ways, and he knows how to support me and how to help me through it. So I think the main issue here is having someone fully understand you, all of your quirks, all of your triggers, symptoms, and all of your comforts, and they can really support you, whether that's your mum, your friend, your colleague, your partner, whoever it is, have someone be aware of all of this stuff who is around you a lot and can help and support you. So as far as my triggers, here's the ones that I know are likely to create anxiety or an anxiety response in me or even a panic attack, which is my kind of extreme version of anxiety. Like if everything gets really, really bad, that is generally where it goes to a panic attack on, on some level. So my triggers are my period, that definitely I have noticed over time is a, a likely time when things could be worse for me. And it obviously depends what else is going on. Like if I have a very calm week with no issues, with no stress, nothing at work, nothing at home, then it might not affect me. But if I'm having my period and it's also other stuff going on, that was undoubtedly a time when anxiety is coming for my life. Um, next up is obviously stressful periods, any stress at work, anything like that that's pretty much a given that that's going to be a trigger. Anything that is overwhelming, like lots going on at the same time, a big event coming up, a big thing at work, a big party I've got to go to, big periods of like real busyness, lots of things to remember, that's a time when it will really be a challenge for me. Big periods of change, moving house, daughter starting school was a big one for me, a really big time as far as anxiety, um, me leaving my job, starting a new job, anything like that, any kind of big areas of change in my life. When I'm very tired, 
that is also another time when anxiety is going to be higher we've talked about social anxiety so anything around social events or events where there's lots of people i don't know or for any reason that i would be uncomfortable in maybe there's someone there i don't get on with maybe that it's very very big or it's you know just very unfamiliar something like that that can be an issue and another one of my triggers which is a very little thing but it it does affect me and that's mess and disorganization so if my kids have made a huge mess or the house is in a huge mess i really feel that that really builds like my physical response to, ang to anxiety so those are kind of my main triggers now as far as comforts things that when i feel myself getting very very anxious and i can feel my anxiety levels building the things that comfort me are listening to asmr or watching asmr videos on my phone having a bath that I find really, really helpful, just lying there and I don't take my phone, I just lie there. If I do take my phone, I put ASMR on. That's like a, a double whammy as far as calming everything down. ASMR in the bath, spot on. Quiet slash alone time. So going and taking a lie down in your bed and it just being quiet, especially if like me, you have young children when, you know, if you're having a bit of a anxiety attack or you're feeling overwhelmed or very, very on the verge of a panic attack or anything like that, I a lot of the time internalize and I keep it in and I'm just sitting there and it's getting worse and worse and worse and actually just saying to my husband I need to go and have a lie down like and just go into my room maybe turning the lights out lying there even going to sleep but it being very very quiet lying still on my own in the quiet that is huge for me that that is very effective for me another one is driving so sometimes if I've had a really, really rough day, I'm feeling very, very stressed, feeling very, very anxious when my husband gets home from work, I will say, I'm just gonna go to the shops. And sometimes I'll go to the shops, sometimes I'll just drive you know, to the shops and back. It's like you know, a 30, 40 minute round trip. And sometimes I will just go and look around the shops on my own, in my own space, in my car, music on. I find that very therapeutic. Just again, it's probably mainly about being in my own space protected in the car on my own that I find very comforting the next thing is the atmosphere in my bathroom is is really effective for me as when it comes to anxiety so I don't necessarily always have to get in the bath or in the shower but if I go into my bathroom it's quite low light it's got a fan that makes a sort of you know whirring noise the floor is slate so it's very very cold um and it's quite um there's only one very small window and I don't know what it is about that room but if I go in there, when I'm feeling really upset, when I'm feeling anxious, when I'm feeling stressed, I go in there, shut the door, sit or lie on the nice cool stone and the whirring and just the nice low light. It's a fairly small contained room. That really helps me as well. So if you've got somewhere like that or you can create somewhere quite comforting of a space. And the last thing, which I know some people will say is not a good idea and not good advice to give. So just bear that in mind. But that is... A glass of wine i can't tell you sometimes that has fully stopped like an anxiety attack in its tracks obviously if it's 10 in the morning probably don't go down that road but for me if it's the evening and i'm feeling very very stressed the kids have gone to bed if i'm feeling anxious i'm feeling like i might go down you know quite a, a large anxiety attack and i have a glass of wine that can sometimes just relax you enough you know add in a couple of the other comforts like having a lie down like sitting in the bath whatever it is that can be very effective for me in the early stages to just stamp it out just relax stop thinking about whatever it is that's triggering you and have a glass of wine and talk it through with your husband that for me can sometimes be the easiest way to stop an attack in its tracks as far as my symptoms like how my anxiety manifests this is what i've kind of noticed and this is what i wrote down on my list so obviously i get tearful i can cry over very little silly things i always get quite um a sort of heart circulatory response so I get very cold feet and hands I often get heart palpitations or flutters I can also get like chest pain a very high heart rate I often get freezing cold when it's really not cold no one else is cold migraines I get quite commonly get migraine response as far as the sort of more like internal feelings as opposed to physical feelings I feel very like detached and alone very irritable I hate physical contact. I don't want to be hugged or touched or like sat on or, you know, like by my children, not by, you know, 
other people but like I, I I feel very sort of like I don't want physical contact in that moment that can kind of make me feel a lot more suffocated and a lot more trapped and claustrophobic which is one of the other things that I feel when I'm in that space I also get quite breathless and altogether this is like kind of the start for me of a going towards a panic attack um, and this is the time when I, I always say I need to go and do something and I need to go and, and use my comforts. The last kind of category for me that I wanted to write down was my escalators. So when I'm in that place, what is going to tip me over the edge? What is going to like make things worse? What is going to exacerbate what I'm already feeling when I'm in an anxious place? And those for me are talking about it in the moment like not not about how i'm feeling but whatever is causing it really big things for me that i needed to explain to my husband and communicate that to my husband that if i say to him i'm feeling very overwhelmed i'm feeling very overwhelmed about whatever it is about moving house it's, it's really overwhelming i'm feeling very anxious his instinct which is a very natural one is to try and help and he'll say you know what's what's making you feel stressed what are you worried about and actually, when I'm in that place where I'm trying to not go into a full anxiety attack or I'm trying not to have a panic attack, that's no good for me because it's going to make it worse. Thinking and talking more about what is causing all this anxiety while I'm really feeling it, as much as that might seem like the right thing to do, for me it's not. What I need to do is first calm everything down move on from the anxiety feelings, get away from the danger of a panic attack, calm myself down, get into a more rational, reasonable space, deal with that first and then we can talk about it. So I think that was really important for me to say, I, I can't talk about it right now, I don't want to talk about it right now, but I'm just telling you this is how I'm feeling, let's talk about it later. That is hugely important for me. The next thing that escalates for me is people questioning me. So I think again that was like my husband in his when he, he didn't know me as well when we first met, he would ask questions and I think he was trying to distract me, but I don't really want to talk at all in those times. So he, he'll sort of say, oh, you know, what did you do today? What did you do this? How was this? What about this? And I'm just like, I don't, no, that is gonna make things worse. So I, you know, I want to sit in quiet or just have, you know, inane babble or just watch something on TV. What I'm looking for is distraction, but not in a way where I have to, you know, think or respond or function really. I just want inane chat or rubbish on the TV or nothing. I don't want to have to like think and do and, and function. I just want to be allowed to like be a zombie for a bit basically. The next thing that makes it worse is forced physical contact. So I think again, this is something my husband, that sounds really wrong, but this is something my husband really struggled with is, is it's obviously very natural for him to wanna hug me or cuddle me or hold my hand or just love me when I'm feeling this way and he can see that I'm upset but I can't, I cannot stand it. So I've had to be quite clear with him about that. Like, please don't try and hug me. Don't be nice to me. Don't love me. Just leave me alone in my own little space. Don't touch me. <laughs> and it's obviously much harder when you've got kids because I don't. I would never tell my kids like not to come and sit on me, not to cuddle me, not to love me. But I do know that it doesn't help in that moment where I'm very, very anxious. So the best thing, you know, if my husband's home is, is for me to go away, go to the gym, go for a bath, go for a lie down, whatever it is. Um, but at the same time, sometimes that's just not possible and I do just have to really try and focus on on loving them and let them love me um and just you know sitting and, and having a really nice quiet cuddle which initially I might feel like Ugh, get off which sounds terrible I know but sometimes the reality is that's how I feel um and it's not that I'm not obsessed with my children I am and I spend more hours per day I would say cuddling my children than most people do but sometimes it does feel quite um suffocating when I'm in the middle of an anxiety attack but most of the time I just if I can't you know I go and have a break because my husband's not home then I will just sit and cuddle with them and just try to enjoy the moment and try to calm and try to just make it a really peaceful cuddle um if it's not possible for me to, you know, use my other comforts. The last thing that really doesn't help me is caffeine. 
Um, I know that makes things worse, so I do really try and steer away from having coffee or, you know, soft drinks with caffeine in. Not just having no coffee, but I think I also need to really make sure that I'm watching things like green tea and just cups of tea. Cause I think, again, you know, English people, when something stressful or bad happens, we drink tea. Everyone makes us a cup of tea. And actually tea can be really high in caffeine as well. Even green tea can be as well. So, you know, maybe having some warm water or, you know, a, like a fruit tea or something like that instead. Um, because caffeine, again, I've noticed is, is a real exacerbator for me. It does make things worse, especially if I'm having things like heart, heart rate, palpitations, hyperventilating, those kinds of symptoms. Obviously caffeine is only gonna make things worse. So yeah, these are all the things for me that I wrote down that I experienced that help and that don't help and that make things worse and that comforts me and that sets me off. This is everything that I wrote down. One, for me to understand and make sense of and to reflect upon and just make more consciously aware of. But two, so that I could share all of that with my loved ones, with my husband certainly, who's always here most of the time when you know this is going on he's the the one to see it and to usually be the one to try and help me so i just think it's really important to one know all this stuff about yourself and two share it with somebody if you can i just also want to say of course that i have really minimal training and experience in this area and obviously i have my own personal experience of it but of course if you are struggling with anxiety or any mental health issue of course you should and must see your doctor at least and they will be able to offer you hopefully a bit more help and advice with where you can go to get more help this is just about me sharing what i do what works for me it's not about telling you that this is all you need to do because obviously nothing can compensate for the professional and trained advice of your doctor or your mental health care professional or getting counseling whatever you can do but if you don't like me have the budget and often if you're in the uk and you have sort of nhs support but then you also have nhs waiting lists and it can take a very long time to get on to those so if like me you are just self-managing it and you want to work on your own self and do what you can do at home and with your own resources then these are just the things i'm sharing with you that have really made a difference for me so there you have it that is kind of how i manage and cope and best survive with anxiety i really hope you found this helpful or useful in some way if you have anxiety or you know someone who does and it's going to help you understand them a bit better i really hope you have a great rest of your week and that i'll see you in a future video otherwise take care for now bye 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 bye, bye.